welcome back to another video it's getting quite common these like these how-to videos or whatever but uh, so I've had some people comment below about doing some faults on engine faults and everything like that so I'm in a CF85 here it's got a engine it's got an engine mill light on so I've plugged into the gel test because that's what we use and we have got quite a few errors on there i'm going to go through walking around with the truck as much as i can as well to show you where some common problems are where these sensors are how what they like to do uh, and anything like that that might be able to help you with any diagnostic stuff um we do get problems with dpfs that don't they're not regenerating enough and you get problems with them we've had we have a lot of NOx faults, we have a lot of particulate matter sensor faults, so there's plenty for me to hopefully be able to show you. I've plugged into this one already and I can see what the fault is, so I will go through the fault, what it is, where it is, and what I'm going to do, and hopefully it will give you a good insight onto maybe even help you a little bit into some common faults on these 85 DAFs. This is this is the MX11 engine, so yeah. What year is this? 2017, so Euro six. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you so soon. So just doing my service, and then obviously I've got a mill light on now, so I thought I'd show you that. So I've already pre-plugged this in and pre done a check on it. Now the fault that I have is a non-present error, but it has a fault with it so I'll quickly show you here so if we scrolled we have a not not before SCR internal fault so it's obviously got a problem with the sensor now the sensor on these are allocated on the downpipe oh, when I get the cab over I'll show you where it is uh, we have four common problems not saying that everyone has the same but these are the ones we have problems with Knocks before, knocks afters, PM sensors, have problems with them, and DPF faults, we have problems with as well. So I'll go around and show, show you um, as much as I can with it where these sensors are. And then if we have got one, I'll show you where it's fitted. But I also have a, a 6x2 track unit, MX13 engine. That I've got to do when it's got a knock, once a knock after on it, so I'll show you how I do that and I'll try and show you as much as I can regarding any engine problems. These are just not saying every every daft that we have is these problems, but these are the common ones that we get that, might, you, that you may get as well. So I'll try and help you and show you as much as I can in regards to this video. So I'll show you. This is the Knox before sensor. It's this little kitty here, that one there, which then goes down and onto point to it. That bad boy there. So I unclip it. So I can clip there. It just comes out there. And then there's one, two 30 mil bolts. And cable tie it, clip it, unclip it all. Comes up. And then onto there, I think it's a 24 or 22 mil. You can get like a socket. You just you can put an extension in and a ratchet that will go over that. Special made socket for oil. You might be able to get a span on it, but we use a little socket for it. So yeah, that's the Knox before sensor there. Fairly easy job to do. It's nothing um, too complicated. So yeah, I'll um, show you some more. So these are the other two sensors I told you about. That kitty there. Is a particulate matter sensor a pm sensor and that little bad boy there is a knox after two eight mil bolts holding them in both of them the knox after sensor the bottom one's okay the top one can be a bit fiddly to get to but the, both these sensor looms it comes round onto here and then the other ones are onto here as well so both of both here pretty easy so not a majorly hard job just that that knocks after sensor is a bit 
top bolt and the left top left hand corner bolt is a bit of a pain in the ass to get to but other than that so pm sensor and knocks after sensor just there so yeah so the other problem we have is with dps which i mentioned earlier there's one two and then there's three torque bolts take them off this has got to come off first two 15 mil bolts at the front that plate off and then behind it there's a clamp of a 30 mil nut undo that take the clamp off knock the cover off and then you'll find your dpf filter there the problems we have with them is they clog up with rubber with um ad blue and they clog up really bad so normally we just have to clean them all out and replace the dpf um but it's not not particularly hard or if you have to do a service item on them and change the dpf they're not hard just be wary of them problems because they do have problems with them but you know we've done quite I'm not saying everyone has them problems but as a as us here we've done quite a few of them so yeah uh, there's the four common things that we have on these as regards to engine fault engine sorry exhaust system faults okay yeah, it's not it's not too bad to be honest with you but yeah that's the dpf filter there Right, so this is the 6x2 tractor unit I'm doing the knocks after and a PM sensor. These are a little bit easier because there's more access room to get up to it. So if you look up here, maybe you can see, there is PM sensor right there. And the knocks is up there in the corner. So I'm going to get these cable ties all cut off. And it'll probably give you a little bit more of an idea of how it's all laid out and everything. So I'll get on and do that and then we'll turn in a minute. So now I'll slip the cable ties off. One here, that is for the PM sensor. Goes to the top one here. And then last but not least, this wiring loom here goes from the bottom all the way up to the PM, sorry. The knocks off the sensor just here at the back, right there. So, two 8 mils on there, two 8 mil bolts on there, both plugs, get them undone, and then we'll get these sensors off and I'll show you the sensors. So, quick one 22 mil, this is one of them sockets I said to you about, that is for the knock sensor. 24 mil this is what i use for the pm sensor it just makes life a lot easier if they're not warranty like you can we have done past just cut them cut the wire in and just put a socket over the over the sensor but yeah for proper tool something like that and then something like that for the knock sensor i'm gonna get these unbolted out and then i'll show you the sensor PM sensor out. I'm gonna fit the new one while I'm here and just do one at a time I think. But yeah, that's basically it. 24 mil pushing plug. Yeah, pretty much PM sensor so I'm gonna get the new one in. So that So let's get this one fitted and then we'll do the next sensor. Unclip a cable tie and move that loom just in front of it forward a bit just so you can get it out. So there's our new one. I'm gonna get fit in the new one and uh, yeah and we'll get it all secured up and I'll show you what it looks like after. So yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. PM. And then lock sensor fitted, all secured up. Hey, so unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to put the camera back up, but <clears throat> you get the gist of the idea what it was. I showed you where the knock sensor is before on the downpipe. I showed you where the knocks after is, which is behind on the cat, where the particulate matter slash PM sensor is, and about taking out the DPF. Once I get a chance to do a service block on a DPF, either a DPF change or I have a DPF fault, I'll record it the best I can to be able to show you that process and, and how we do that. Pretty simple though, all that sort of stuff. It's just bolt on, bolt off, but it's obviously known where they are. Showed you quickly on the computer, the fault codes we had with it. But yeah, it's, it's not, a, not a hard job really. So I hope you're enjoying the videos. If, you, if, you're, if there's any videos you particularly want to see as well, I'll try and do them as well as best I can. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It always helps out and um, I will see you in the next video.